Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm at, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Hi, this hi. is Elder Beebe Show. Who do I have in the studios with me? <laughs> hi, this is Jim Stone. Well, hi, Jim Stone. How are you today? Well, I'm very well, and I hope you are, too. I am. I'm having a great day, and you are my next guest. And I told you guys he'd be here. We're going to talk about uh, five easy theses. <laughs> theses. Theses. Okay. What, what, what is that about? Tell me about that. Yeah. Uh, it's a book about the big issues in economics in this country that need to be solved but aren't likely to get talked about much in a political campaign. Uh, I had an alternate title for the book, Too Big to Touch. Okay. Well, since the uh, current political campaign is about people characters, people sizes, and all of that other stuff, I'm sure none of this will make it to the stage. What is your book going to tell us? Well, I hope it's going to say that to people that, yes, there are these big issues, and yeah, they're really serious and they have to be addressed, but America's not in decline. We can fix all of these things, and there are logical and fairly simple ways to fix them, but it's going to take a lot of political will because our leaders aren't going to take us there unless the public demands it. Well, how do you get people to understand that because I'm of a new thought generation or, or I'd like to think I am. If you tell somebody something over and over and over, well, we see what happened to the other 16 people in the race. If you kept talking, <laughs> if you kept calling them a liar over and over and over, the people believed it and they believed it also. So we've been told that America's in decline. You got to make it, we're going to make it great again. And it's the word again that is resonating with people. So how do we let them know it's still great? I just told my daughter last night, who got back from Mumbai, India, and she understands this is the best place on the planet to live today. Yes, I certainly agree with that. We're the most innovative country. I mean, if you look at the products that are most popular in the world, uh, great, many of them were invented in the United States, even if they're not manufactured here. And that's, and that's part of what the book is about. Uh, that is, we can, we can keep our position in, in a competitive world, but we need to fix some things. We need to fix the budget imbalance where we're wasting money. It's not that we shouldn't run a deficit, it's that we're wasting the deficit. We need to, to make good on the Social Security promise we make to people. We need to do something about the rising inequality, all the money floating to the top. The, the average family, the median family income in the United States has not increased since 1974. Lots of wealth has been created, but it's all gone to the top. Our education system isn't really working right for the 70% of people who are not going on to college and need career skills. And for those who do go on to college, it's too expensive. And, and so we need to fix that. Our health system, well, it's not producing terrible results. It produces about average results. But we spend 18% of GNP for something that everybody else spends 10% of GNP on, and we're wasting a trillion dollars a year that way. And finally, 2008 should have convinced everybody that Wall Street is just out of control in scale, that we need to have a downsizing, we need to have less leverage, more disclosure, and we can do all those things. They're all logical, they're all doable, 
but the public's got to demand them because our leaders are not going to take us there easily. Okay, you're saying the public got to demand it. I'd love to talk with you, sit down and have a cup of tea and talk all day because you're saying things that are so important. You say the public's demanding them, but yet you have this whole group of people following a negative leader or Pied Piper. So why isn't the public demanding this from a more positive sense than a negative sense? So a lot of, a lot of these issues that I talk about require a change in mindset for the public, and that takes time. People don't just reverse things that have become cultural traditions. People think they can have all the health care in the world for free. People think that our education system is wonderful if it's just everybody uh, handles it locally in whatever way they want. Uh, people think that uh, our social security system, either either they, they believe that it can be, uh, th they can pay everybody without changes, that's wrong, or they believe that it's irrelevant because it isn't going to pay anybody, and that's wrong. These things can be fixed, but it takes a change in public mindset. Where can I, uh, um, we know we can get a copy of your book, and I'm giving away a copy of the book. But where would you like my audience to go and find out more about the book? Because this is yeah. something of value that's come along. And I talked to a lot of people about a lot of books, and half of them don't make sense. But that's my job. But, <laughs> but, this, but this has some value to it. I think if you pick up the book, you read some of it, you can walk away and at least maybe want to challenge something and make it a better uh, uh, thing in society. Yeah, I certainly tried to write it so that lots and lots of people could understand it. These are understandable issues. Um, and I have a pretty good website, www.5easytheses.com, and you can learn a good bit more about the book there. But most of all, I would hope people would read it because it's an educated public that ultimately gets to make decisions in a democracy, but the public's got to wake up and demand it or you end up with decisions being made only by vested interests. My final question, Jim Stone, is why did you write the book? Well, I felt I had unfinished business from my government career, and I was lucky enough that uh, my wife and I have two children. They went off to college. We became empty nesters, and I had a little time to write about things that had been on my mind for decades. I think these things can be fixed, and they just weren't going to be talked about enough. Jim Stone is the founder and the chairman and a chief executive of the Plymouth Rock Group of Companies. I want to thank you so much for writing the book and being a part of the Valder Beebe Show conversation. Uh, I have an initiative called Take Over Life. I believe that, you know, people, we've just given up the best gift that God has given us, and that's the right to choose. And we pretty much, you know, acquiesce that to other people. But thank you so much for writing the book. Well, that's what I like to hear, and I, I like your initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being part of the conversation on the Velder BB Show.